there, this is Mac 20Q and today I want to have a look at the application called Hype. And we're going to make a web page that uses HTML5 and it really is very easy indeed. So the first thing to do is to drag and drop a couple of things in there. You can have things in there which are just completely HTML5 and you can have other things in there which uh, don't actually do much but they're for decoration. So things like this here which is just a header we're going to have in there. Uh, just before we get started, just uh, show you what we've got here. We've got uh, the inspector there I've just put away. This is our uh, canvas, as it were, that we're going to be uh, putting our stuff onto. And I've set it up so that it's the right size for the iPad. Okay, if we go to the inspector, go to page, we can set up a number of default sizes. So, for instance, we can choose this one here for the iPad. 1024 by 768. This bit here is just about giving us some warnings about uh, compatibility with browsers and that comes up when uh, we get and do an export. Okay so first of all we've got a header in there. You can put text in there as well. You get your elements from the top here by going to this bit here. You can put a box in or some text. Let's have a bit of text. Okay so there we've got a bit of text in there. We can do things with the text. Choose that bit of text there. Put it in bold. Make it larger. Center it. We can select bit, that bit there, we can have that so it's all justified. If I move that across, you'll see there we've got some things that line up our text with the center, if that's what we want. Or I can move it across there and I can have the text so it lines up with the edge of my graphic at the top there. You can grab things of these here and move your text around to suit. Let's bring in a logo, if I can drop that in there. Okay, so basically that's going to be our front page as it were and we're going to do some animation with that. So this is a button which I've made in Art and Text 2 and you'll see that what we can do with that is we can go to our inspector and we can say that on mouse click we can have it go to a URL and we can say if we want to open it in a window. Let's look at our timeline now. So let's move this to the beginning Okay, let's do something with this subscribe button. So let's have it so that when it starts off, it is invisible. And after a couple of seconds, it arrives on the page. So we'll just tap that button there. We're going to record something. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to this element expector there. And we'll take the opacity right down. Move across the timeline to two seconds in and we'll take the opacity all the way back up again and now we can turn off our recording now if we go back to the start of our animation I'll press play and you can see what happens our subscribe button initially isn't there but it becomes visible after a short amount of time so what else can we do let's take this one here for instance our application logo so again let's go to the start and right at the very start Instead of working with our opacity, let's work with the size of it perhaps. So we'll go to that tab there and press our record button again. This is the easiest way to get some things to get started with your animations. So when we open up the web page, there's nothing there apart from a little dot. Then we'll go to this part here, three seconds into the timeline. And then what we'll do is we will increase the size of it so that it goes to that size there, the size that we want it to be at the finish date. So let's go back to the start again and press play. So there we have two animations to get us started. Let's have um, a button in there, another button. And let's have a textured button and we'll call it next. Page. Okay, so there's our button up there, and let's put it back down to the bottom again. Let's go to two seconds into our animation. Let's show you another way of creating an animation. Instead of recording it, what we can do is we can just put in one of these uh, points here. Go to three seconds in the timeline, which is where everything else stops, and we'll put in another one of those. Now it's not doing anything at the moment because uh, we haven't changed anything. Let's go back to the first one. Let's have the opacity down at zero. So that's just put in another animation for us. Let's bring it all back to the start again, move our timeline out of the way briefly. 
and let's press apply so there you go we've got uh, some things which are on the screen right from the start and stay there all the time and then there are some other applications which arrive on the screen as time goes by now we've got this next button here but it doesn't do anything yet so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add another scene because we want to go to a next scene so show scenes click on the add button and now we have a new scene and this time we'll bring in our header again drag it and drop it in over there let's put a movie in there why not put movies into these things as well you know let's put that at the top lined up in the center and we can also change the size of our movie so it fits into the space better let's bring it down there and put it there and we can have a reflection on there if we want to or we could have a shadow on there let's bring a shadow down so there's our shadow and just uh, blur the shadow make it a little bit better so it just pops out from the uh, screen a little bit better doesn't that look nice so now we have two pages let's go back to our first page so when this button is pressed we want it to go to the next scene and we don't this these things here this it concerns what it looks like so when the button is pressed we can have it so that the text becomes bold we can have it when you are hover over it that the text color changes so instead of having black there you can have red there and just bold as well so it can be red and bold okay so that's our button there sorted with uh, what is going to happen when we hover over it or when we press it but here's what's going to happen on mouse click so mouse click we want it to jump to scene and we're going to have it to go to the next scene and you can choose a transition and we'll have a transition of a swap okay so that's all set up for having a look at and the thing that I think we should do next is to have a look at it in preview so let's open preview and this will take us into Chrome so our first page there it just uh, came up there look if I click on this button here it takes me to a YouTube video it opened it up in a new tab for us if I hover over the top of it you see we get our change of color from red it goes bold click on it and it did a nice little animation to the next page this is textcraft and it's a great tool for doing your writing how good is that then right let's close that let's go back to hype so you see it works quite nicely there but how do we get it onto a web page how do we get it so that we can have people visit it on the actual internet well it's quite easy all we have to do is export to HTML5 export to a folder gives us all our compatibility warnings there I'm going to export this as a hype test into my documents folder let's click on save and see what happens let's go to finder go to the documents folder where I just saved it so there's our hype test it put it into a folder for us that way you've got it nice and clean you know where everything is then so to get it to actually work all you need to do is to copy these things here into your uh, server wherever you're going to put it and the application that I use for that is an application called Cyberduck so if I want to send it into my uh, Mac 20 questions website all I've got to do is drag it and drop it in there I've already started with uh, some of these already doing some testing already and I've got Dragon and Dragon 2 in there already so to get this to work all I have to do is to grab this and this drag it and drop it into Cyberduck and it will be uploaded onto my web page so let's go back to Google Chrome and have a look at something I did earlier I'll just take to reload the page so you can see what happens so we've got text moving from one place to another we've got a button here which is next page click on that and go to our next page couple little animations there and I can take it to go back again and it reloads and does a little animation again so that's all there is to it in using hype to make some HTML5 animated web pages
now if you haven't done so already go and click on the like button to like this video if you find it any use at all and why don't you subscribe to the channel so that anytime I bring something new out you'll be the first to hear about it. Bye bye now, until next time.